of the weather that we've been having here in England this year. Awful rain and wind, and the bowlers have really not to, had anything to really get the sun on their back. But hopefully, the day for the Florence Private Club is going to be a day to remember. The work that's been put in this particular venue is incredible when you think we're really in a picturesque part of Stoke-on-Trent and there's not too many picturesque parts for people in Stoke-on-Trent who obviously live around the area. But when you see what the sort of the setup that uh, the Forest Private and the Potters and Districts Association have put together, they will be really surprised a lot of officials in the Crown Green game that they can compete with the best in and can, can hold a tournament like this. There's a crowd of around about 1,000 to 1,500 people already inside the green, and they've come from all over the country. 15 counties having bowlers taking part in the competition, and they are going to be supported all through the day. The crowds will be cheering them along, and hopefully they'll be crying out to get their man home. On the green at the moment, there at number 12 in his first round game is a famous double Waterloo winner, Arthur Murray. Now Arthur Murray obviously is one of the biggest favourites to win this tournament. He's done very, very well in a host of tournaments all through his career. As I said, his, his major caps were the two Waterloo Championships. The greens really, when you think Arthur, looking at this green in particular, the number one green, a real big flat green, is suitable to Arthur's playing, a corner tight bowler, and obviously he's going to be a danger to some of the runners in the field today. Now, looking also on the green at the moment is a player who's just about to start his first round game, and that's a local hope, Roy Price. Roy Price, the Potters champion, wearing the number 27 uh, number on his back. He's the man who's going to be involved in everything that we hope that the Stoke on Trent public would like to see. Price started second favourite on the day to Brian Duncan. He's five to one in the tournament. And he's going to be a major force. And let's hope that all the Potteries people who'll be taking part and watching this tournament all through the day will be giving Roy some tremendous support. When we look round the green, we see a marvellous sight over there. The marquee, which the Florence Private Bowlers and the Potteries and District Bowlers have erected themselves. Inside there, we'll be going in later on during the afternoon to see what's going on show. There's all sorts of catering and bar facilities, and there's all sorts of trophy displays, people advertising sportswear, and they are, that's going to be the major function for all the potteries, ladies who've done a lot of hard work here in catering for those people. Going around the green, we're having a look at, there's two greens in progress on the competition with that many bowlers taking part. They're playing on two greens, and the number two green, and in a British Crown Green final, you usually see that number two green isn't up to scratch, but for the Florence Private Greensman, he's made the number two green exactly like the number one green, and that's in perfect condition. Bowlers on that green at the moment playing their first round games, which is the hardest game really that any bowler will tell you to get over, are Len Higginbottom, another Waterloo winner and a prolific handicap winner. He's out there playing his first round game against Glyn Healy from the Welsh County. Our own Bernard Stanway's out there as well, he's playing, he's wearing the last number in the competition, number 64, and only seven days ago when the Potters County played their semi-final Crossfield Cup match against the North Lanks and Fylde side, Bernard had the misfortune to lose 21-6 to the opponent he's playing this afternoon, and that's Reg Rigby from the North Lanks and Fylde side, so we'll be hoping that Bernard Stanway puts that right and through the day. Some one or two results that we've had through the, the morning but so far has seen the, as I said, there's quite a few players players involved in the tournament. We've seen Vernon Lee go through. Alan Shacklady, the Lancashire County player, he's already won through. And the man that's been really informed in this 1985 season is Tommy Hayes, the Greater Manchester champion. And the man over the last month of bowling has won around about £3,000. So he's skated through. He beat Stuart Thorpe, the Potteries Hope, 21 15. And also, while we're talking about the players, another disappointment for the Potteries County has seen Tony Wood, who plays for the Vidal Flavour Club, go out 21 3 to the very highly talented Warwick and Worcester player, Paul Gamsby. So bowling's well in progress. And as I said, there's lots of things going on through the day. There's a big draw going to be taking place with around about a thousand pound in prize money, in prizes for the for all the winners that, who uh, get the lucky tickets. And we're looking around at the crowd again, and there's lots of people to see. There's all sorts of officials here. Ron Holt, the, the secretary of the British Crown Greens, here in taking his capacity. Also, the president of the British Crown Green 
Is he a Bert Lewis or own Bert Lewis? And at the moment, it's the pottery officials and measurers who are, are doing the, their job. They're, what they do in these Crown Green finals is that they take it in a turn in a rota of all the counties. They share out the day because we're talking about bowling started at 10 o'clock and probably the final will be going on till about seven or half past. So plenty in store. We'll be keeping you in touch with you today. We'll just have a look at our own Roy Price. We'll look at Roy Price's game. Play the second end of the second end of the tournament, hoping for a, a good start. He counted the first one against Colin Campbell, not a, a very underrated player, Colin Campbell. He's just played an end there. And he's I mean, he looks at his good too, a double to Campbell, so that's two one. And I wonder what Campbell will be thinking against how to adopt a tactics again against Price. Price, already a winner of this Florence tournament, the individual tournament, still in the tournament this year, going for a double up against Colin Campbell. So we'll just keep a, a few minutes with Roy, he's our main out. Campbell's bowling out down the centre of the green. Very fast mark this down to the middle of the green. At 40 yard bump peg, Campbell leads out, bowls nice and steady down the centre of the green. Roy's weighing it up, he looks a bit on edge at the moment, Roy, but Campbell looks as though he's played a short bowl here, giving Price a chance. Yes, two yards short, Roy weighing the situation up, down nicely, gets it out, lovely. Good control of the balls, Price. Weighing it all up further than Campbell's, missed the ball and it's won it. He's hit the ball and it's one off it anyway, but not a good ball. Price is in for one, two one down. Campbell out again with his second ball. He looks after the likes this one, running it in. Done with the tartan cap further this time. Played a good ball this time. Oh, and he's running the back of Price. Played a good ball for Price. Now a chance for Price to get a double. Down he goes, the Pottery's champion. Here he comes, looking at it. Played underneath, anywhere for a length. He gets a clear run, and he's running Campbell. Only one to Roy, two all there. So Roy a little bit disappointed with that. As it goes, but that's what happens. Balls, he looks as though he's looking quite relaxed. Big day for Roy Price, the main hope for the Pottery people. Also just taking part on the green now, the number one crown green bowler, and that's Brian Duncan, the man that everybody's got to beat here today. Duncan, the winner of every major honour in the game. The 92 favourite for the tournament with the bookies. Opens up with his lead ward about 30 yards. Let's see what he plays here. Duncan coming in with a good ball. First ball, just two foot past the jack. Mark of a champion, that fella. Duncan now up. Duncan and Price on at the same time. These could be clashing in the last 16. It's Roy bowling out. Two all now. Roy going up for the heavy corner. Price down. Bump bag, a swinging mark. Hoping to catch Campbell short. Looks to be on the road, yes. It stops, it's a good ball. Good ball for Price. Only two foot fast on about 45 yard distance. Campbell's down, it looks to be narrow. Looks to be narrow, he's given that up. Going for another Price. The crowd are getting right behind him now. Campbell's first ball in the gutter. Good chance for Price to make two good balls count here. A good start is necessary in these tournaments because it takes a lot of pressure off you if you can get away from your opponent and then relax a little bit and get the tension and atmosphere of the day inside your foyer and you're bowling well. That's all that counts in this game. Anyway, Campbell bowling his second one on a better row, but he could be sure. Price could have caught him out. Price is tipping it to win. He's up for the land, he's hit the jack, and a good ball from Campbell. And that's, one, that's a good ball considering his first one went in the ditch. Tied short and everything with his first foot. A good ball, so that's 3 2 to the North Langston file man. Now then, we'll have a look at Brian Duncan. He was down in his first end. Duncan against Andrew Fern, the young Derbyshire hope, the Derbyshire Merrick winner last year. Fern deciding tactics of a short mark and Duncan doesn't think it's 21 yards. That's the distance that the ball is after ball, 19.4 metres, and Duncan straight away calling for the referee and measures to measure this distance of 19.4. Let's just keep with Duncan now. He's not having any of these fiddling tactics. He wants to be on with the game in the corners. The referee takes the tape, it's got a measure. It doesn't look a mark, it doesn't look anywhere near a mark. No, it's no mark. So Duncan sends the jack now, and I'll bet. I'll bet we a, a shilling now, but I know where this jack will be. Right in the corner if he can get there. Yeah, straight in the corner. Roy Price now, he's in the corners as well, bowling along the full length of the green, Price. Coming down here to us. 
Campbell's ball. Bold his first ball there. Length ball, but a little bit tight. Price. Price now down, finger fell. Well through Campbell, a chance for Price to get to here. This looks to be running a little bit. Got the short stop in, this is the fastest part of the green, it's going out. Bad ball from Price, not very happy with that. Not very happy at all. Bad ball, it's two that count. As I said, the 64 players taking part and it's a marvellous occasion for the Florence Private Bowling Club to be staging a tournament like this last year. They had a little five opener when they staged the Midland Masters. That only involves five counties. And obviously the work that they did has proved to the Potters and District that this was the only place that they could come to for their British Crown Green Final, which comes round only once every 15 years. The last one was held at Tunstall Park, in which Roy Price's teammate, Ivan Baker, reached the semi-final. And it's not Baker here today from the Bertie's head, it's Price. And Price ball is straight along the middle of the green. Going round the green a little bit, Roy, using his experience, using his knowledge of the green. Campbell, they ball, both ball about a yard short, but Roy could be in there. Price down, finger back. Nickname Blue. The man who used to play with blue discs on his woods and also wore blue jumper, but he's changed his colours this year. I wonder whether he's a little bit superstitious. He's played a length there. It's not a real good ball. He's not settled down too well yet. Campbell down. Has he altered? Has he got more in this ball? Looks to be more in it, but he could be tight. Could be tight, swinging away now, swinging well away. Could have left Price a double. He's having a look. No, it's only one. One to Price. Here's Brian Duncan now. This is the man. He's got his corner. He's in his corner now. Playing down the corners, Duncan. Full length of the green. Played one inside a foot and half. Never been here before, never seen the venue. But... Well, Andrew Fern, Ali Rudd Road here. If he's here, he's a chance. Going in the, in the chance, he's won it. Great ball. Great ball, won it. Good ball from the young Derbyshire player there. Shows Duncan he can play corners as well as he can play short marks. Duncan never short with his second ball. What about this? The crowd. Is he underneath? They shouted in off, he's underneath and gone out. Marvellous setting, the crowds will be coming in all day. They expected around about two and a half thousand for the main main events when it really hops up around about four o'clock this afternoon. They expect to cater for two and a half thousand people here today. I know I can really say that the, the people who are involved in looking after all the people here have done a marvellous job. Bryce running it in here. What about this? Can he win it? Oh, it's a good effort. It's a good effort. Three balls inside, two foot. Price points to Campbell. Campbell's on. Campbell's on. Still on number two green. We're looking at number two green over there. Len Higgins, but he's still on. Bernard Stanway is involved in a tussle, as I said, trying to make amends for that county match. That green is a little unknown to all our players and Potters people. They don't really play the green a lot and obviously that isn't a good uh, bonus for the players they've got to really know these greens and Florence Private don't use the number two green a lot so that's where our players could come unstuck a little on the number two green but it's in perfect condition as we say there's good marks on that green and one major shot that we've heard already is that uh, Jimmy Collin the top Lancashire player the skipper of the Lancashire County side has been beaten by our own Frank McGraw, and that was a shock, really, because Frank has not really been in top tournaments. He only just broke through. He got into the semi-final of the Potters Merit Riss a few weeks ago. He's well, well, upset one or two of the top, top players, and he's also won three. Frank McGraw, we hope to be seeing more of him during the afternoon. As I said, he's beaten Jim Collin in his first game. Anyway, it looks as though Price is he's one down there. One down. Campbell's he's played a good ball, but the match Price is weighing the situation. He shouldn't be short here with the second ball. No, he's played at it. Played at the ball. Now Roy looking to take him out. Looks a little bit over the top, yes, and it's one down. So that started very well, really. Again, 5-4 in favour of Campbell. Good on, Stevie. Good on, Lord. And we 
still looking at the people coming in. We're walk, looking round and there's still lots of activity at the gate. People coming in all through the day. All sorts of uh, players here. The best players are on the side of the green, as we all know in this game. But that stand there is going to hold about 600 people for the final day. And then people who book them seats are going to be in for a real treat through the afternoon. People from, as I said, all over the country. People have been coming to these all England for 20 and 30 and 40 years. These are the, this is the day that everybody looks forward to in British Crown Green Bowling. They're all trying to pick out the winner, as you can see, the win the situation. Of Duncan's on, Bryce is on here. These are the men that the, 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 noted, the noted followers of Bowl are looking at to see if they pick the green up well and see if it's their money they can pick out the winner and try and win themselves a few shilling. An interesting fact was when I came down to the Florence Private Club yesterday, I was saying to one or two of the members, Al Bolton and one or two of the people like that, and Peter Hulls, I wonder whether they'd ordered enough beer and they were saying, well, they'd ordered 25 gallons of beer on its own, so that's hope they don't run dry of beer because these people, Bowles is a thirsty job to the spectators. It's, but I don't think they're all going to short of beer. I think everything should be okay. The weather's gone a little bit overcast at the moment, but the weather forecast hopefully is going to keep the rain off and all the people are going to enjoy it. Anyway, we'll look at Roy Price now. We'll, we'll, we'll go with Roy Price now. He's 7 4 down, Roy against Colin Campbell. As Campbell leading out, pulled the bag up to the other corner. Roy will know it's ever up there. Wonder whether Campbell knows where it is. Duncan's just played a, a wonder ball there. Duncan taking Fern out, played the jack for two. Two to Duncan, up they go. Duncan six, Fern three. Anyway, back with Roy Price now. Campbell's led a yard through. Roy, up, oh, looks to be short. He's not, he's forgotten that it's heavy up that corner. That's the corner that catches him out. Down goes Campbell. Been about a bit, Colin Campbell, in the hot bed of balls in Lancashire, lives from Burnley. He's played a better ball here, he's taken it out. Played a good ball. Good ball round about. Only a foot past the jack. Price has bobbled that one out, it shouldn't be there. Shouldn't be there. He's not there, I don't think. Long way to go. That bobble did it, it saved one, but I don't think it's won. Has it won the crowd of tipping it in that corner? It has, oh, it's a good ball then, good ball. Good. He didn't like how he delivered it out, but it's got there. Price back then, going now for his, for his corner. Price down to this corner, this is a fast corner, the end of the green. All the crowd are shouting for their own players. And they've all got their own favourites here. People are coming. Two to Iggy Bottom. Oh, the green. He's a man who could. Now then, what's Price played here? 50 yards corners. Looks to be a good ball. Good ball in the corner. Yes. Real ball. Good ball. Good ball for Price. Another two to Duncan. Duncan now finding his own form now. Two balls inside a foot there on the 50-yard mark. So Duncan keeping away now. Nine, nine teams for Duncan. So Roy Price, seven five down. Price bowling his second wood. Down he goes. He's got Campbell first in the ditch. And then Price after him now, knowing he's got a game on his hand here. First game. That's a good ball. Another good ball. Another good ball from Price. Yes, good ball, Roy. Them are good balls. They're the ones that count. Shaking his head, doesn't look too happy with them. I'll tell you what, I wouldn't mind them every day. Has he caught him short? Has he caught him short? Begging tight and short. Been back a bit, he could save one, it's gone back. Now then, Roy didn't see, couldn't understand why that had got there. That's one. He's won it. Wait five to Price. So as I said, well, everything going on through the day. Plenty of atmosphere, plenty of people around.
Well, we're back on the number two green where Roy Price and Brian Duncan both won their first round games. Price, in fact, had a tussle with Colin Campbell, but he got through and won the game, and Brian Duncan also won his game. Duncan came on the number two green, progressed into the third round, as well as did Roy Price after being a little bit under pressure. Bernard Stanway, our local hope, he's been involved in a great game on the number two green. Stanway was well in front of Nigel Clarkson from South Yorkshire. Stanway, after leading 2014, got back to Clarkson, got back to 2018, 20 all, and Stanway finally clinched that clinch that point. But Stanway's now on the number two green again, as you can see. He's involved in his third round game against Andrew Richards from Warwick and Worcester. And as we all know, the Warwick and Worcester County, they're always well supported. Their favourite, Paul Gamsby, went out. Gamsby, after beating Tony Wood 21-3, went out to Ian Johnson in his second game 21-15. So the man now that they're all shouting for is Hitchings, and it's two to Hitchings in that game. They're, they're shouting, the Warwick and Worcester people are here, and also the Potters and District crowd are also behind Bernard Stanway. As I said, the two greens involved all through the day up to the semi-finals and the main match on this green, what you can see at the moment, is between the two prolific players, Ken Strutt, Greater Manchester player, and Len Higginbottom, who represented the Lancashire team. Lan Lancashire captain Higginbottom won every honour in the game, as well as Strutt, apart from the all winning. So it's a battle of wits between these two players. Obviously, Strutt could be a little bit of a favourite on the number two green, not being as big in size as the number one green. Suitable to Ken Strutt's play, he likes to play 30 odd yards down on the running part of the green. And as we can see, he's caught Higginbottom short down there. Higginbottom, not used to a small green, likes to push his balls out. And obviously, that's going to be a battle all the way to 21. And in fact, the game Higginbottom and Strutt looks as though they could win the bottom half, unless Bernard Stanway does cause an upset, but we've seen Strutt again there play a yard ball with his first wood and then play two inches away with his second. That's put the pressure on Higginbottom. Higginbottom in his red sweater, running it down. Amy to save, he's a chance. Played it all, oh, and it was an unlucky ball. He played it at Strutt's ball, run his ball up to the jack, one to Strutt. Also involved, also involved along, along the... The third round game is Bob Hitching. Bob Hitching, the Yorkshire champion. Hitching won the Yorkshire championship for two years running. Now he's become a local favourite here. Hitching, the man who's in form. Hitching won his first game 21 13, then he won 21 10. Now in his third round game here, Bob Hitching from the Yorkshire they made it to one of the favourites to win the tournament. <laughs> He's a favourite. We're walking along the number two green. We're picking up Bernard Stanway here. Bernard Stanway playing now. His third round game. Played across the middle, Stanway had an odd game in his last round. He was always in front, but he took a lot to get in that vital chalk. He's played a good ball here, Bernard. Good ball. Bernard Stanway, probably in one of the easiest groups, if you like to say. There's not many easy groups in the All England, but when you look at the programme, they're picking Stanway out to get his group one. It's a chance now for two. Bernard Stanway, the Burzum Suburban player, down. Steady player, Bernard. Played out, should be two here, no problems if he's here, as long as he's here. Struggling to get one. One down, bad ball from Bernard. We're picking up Higgin Bottom and Strutt now. Higgin Bottom and Strutt. They wouldn't like to be playing each other in this competition, but that's how the goal goes. Higgin Bottom. As you
from the Burgess Head Hotel, playing against Terry Moss, the Wanakin Worcester man who's been in form in the last few weeks. But Stanway beat the second favourite, Ken Scott, led out, played a good ball, led ball in the corner. Stanway now, everybody's favourite from the Potteries. Terry Moss, give it up, not here. Turned his back on it. What a climax now. The man from everybody's bowling world, Brian Duncan in World Semi-Final. Let's give it up. Nearly won it. It's won it. Boss has won it. He's given that game. Hey, Duncan now looking at Duncan's game. What a good ball. Two to Duncan. Two to the man. The man who wins everything. Stanway. Back on Stanway's game. The man in the semi final. The man who's come back from a serious illness. Chance. Good chance. Played a little bit low now. Moss. Warwick and Worcester, one of the best supporting counties in the game. Yes, You're right so there. Nice Play for two, Moss. Has he reached? Two. Good road. Not, not reached. One down. Looking at the other game, who can beat this man, Duncan? I can. Who can beat Duncan? He's a quid. South Yorkshire, Derek Poole from South Yorkshire, well he's gone through, he won his series for the game, he's 21 oh, really, lad. Ian Johnson from Dorsia, good effort Ben, it's Duncan against, it's Duncan against Poole, and it's Stanway against the other man in the, the, the semi-final, Hopefully we'll get
get into the final when we are going to be in the sports desk against the number one Crown Green bowler who's come to Stoke on Trent to delight 3,000 spectators here. We hope that well, you've enjoyed the programme and enjoyed the atmosphere that people have talked about. I know that it, British Crown Green Bowling is not one of the sports that everybody knows in the area, but I can tell you this, Bill, people support it. in the morning and now we're down to the last four and everything's blessed with sunshine tremendous atmosphere an incredible crowd that's been housed here at the Florence private club some 2,000 people around the green they've got the number one player in the semi-final one semi-final Brian Duncan but what's better than anything when you've got one local hope Bernard Stanway here wearing the last number on the 64 players he's wearing number 64 Bernard Stanway and he's reached, he's reached the quarter, he's reached the semi-finals. In his best game, when you look back, Bernard has beat Ken Strutt in the quarter-finals, 21-17. Strutt, a man who's won everything in, in Crown Green Bowling history. Looking at Bernard Stanway, the Burham Suburban player. Tension now great. Duncan's edging on the other game. He's edging on the mat. He's never won this game. He's never won, he's never won the tournament. It's a major honour this, you talk about the Waterloo Hotel, but in individual tournaments, the British Crown Green Tournament is the number one to win. So it's Duncan against, it's Duncan against, Stamp, it's Duncan against Mill, Mill, Duncan against Moss, and Duncan against the lad from South Yorkshire, Derek Poole. When you look round at the crowd, what an incredible crowd round. Look at the housing of the people. They're still coming in now. All through the day, people are coming in. Incredible, incredible scenes. Better when you see a Potter's man involved in the final. Anyway, they're all watching this man Duncan, red shirt, running him in. Got one to beat. If he doesn't beat this, he'll think, what's going on with him? Has he won it? Is it nearer? Is it near enough? Two to Duncan. Two to Duncan. Duncan's ten. Pool two. He's out. He knows the 800 pounds is in his grasp. Bernard Stanway now. Bernard Stanway bowling down against Terry Moss. The water. Yes, Stanway. 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 Play the toucher. Stanway. Now. He's the man. He's, he's tight. He's played tight. Tony Moss could leave a double for Stanway. Two to Stanway. Just a little bit of a comment now from Tony Phillips. Now Tony Phillips, man from the Bursies. Head. First of all, Tony, you've lost a man from Bursies, head, but you've got Bernard Stanway in now. He's playing really well. Yeah, he's playing great game. Just hope he can do for the party. Yes, he's, he's leading out now. He's playing it. He's playing in the mark where everybody could get caught short, yeah. and that's the way you've got up to play. Back. Up the back. What about this man, Duncan? The first time in Stoke Country. Fantastic. Great to see him here. Entertaining. Anyway, Stanway led out in the heavy corner. Stanway right on the road. He looks to play the toucher. Yes! Oh, the crowd are going now. Moss is asking how far he's off. Stanway 4, Moss 2. 
It's Moss running him up now. Chances building. He's not there. He's caught him out. He's down way. 64 on his back. Off, after he goes. Off he goes now. Tension. Watching everything he does. Underestimated player. Last week, 21-6 down in the county. But that doesn't mean anything in balls. That means nothing. One day you're a champion. One day you're chump. He's a man stand way at the moment. Has he reached again? Has he got him short again? Oh, he's right on the road, but lost. Has he licked him? Oh, tremendous ball! Tremendous ball! The crowd will be the crowd is listening to the crowd is giving Moss all the enthusiasm the one can wish to have. Back with Duncan, right in the corner now, Brian Duncan. One, two foot away from the jack, 50 yards away, he's off. The quick trot. The seaside trot. One from the Lancashire coast, he's played another. Closer than his first, closer than his first. Knocked it over there. Look at Brian Duncan, he knows that this title's well in his grasp. Is he short? Has he played one that Duncan doesn't play? Two to Duncan! Two more to Duncan! Oh, he saved one! Good ball! Good ball! He saved one! He saved one! Good ball! 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 Good He's the man, he's the man, he's come through 64 players. He's the one who's 64 players, Duncan. Playing the heavy corner. Played another. Roundabout, he's there, roundabout, Duncan. Has he reached? Has he reached? That's the big question, has he reached? Not reached, not reach up that corner. No, he's stroking him out. Bernard Stanway now, back on here. Needs to save, good ball. Pass to Jack and Jack. On through. On semi-final, he's Duncan, 12. 12-2. Stanway, 5-4 down. What's he say about this? He's let this loose, he's let it loose. He's not short, he's not short. He's not short. How many for Duncan? Stanway, he's got all sorts of pressure on him. When you look at the tournament, you think to yourself, well, Duncan's been involved in all sorts of competitions. We've got three players who've never seen anything like this in their life, but Duncan's always been involved. Anyway, we look at Bernard Stanway. It's Teddy Moss bowling into the corner, tricky corner. Playing down, finger fed. Bernard Stanway down, crouches down. 25, 30 yards, 30 yards, Stanway. Has he reached? He's reached. Can he win it? Can he win it? He's gone out. He's gone out. It's Moss now. Moss after this. He's fancying his chances, Moss. He's played another one. He's taking it out. He's taking it out. Good ball. Good ball. Nice two. Nice two. Stanway down. Needs to get one closer in this second. He needs one closer. He needs to. Is a chance. He's a chance here. A good chance. Any luck? Good effort. Good ball from Bernard. Good ball from Bernard. Duncan still playing the corners. Still playing the corners, Duncan. He's here. Duncan needs one to beat. He needs one to beat. Hey, up. What about this? Hey, up. Anyway, change of venue now. Werner Stanway right along the edge of the green. Terry Moss played him right along the edge. 
Not a good lead from Moss and not a good second ball from Stanway. He's two foot off. He'll hope to beat that, Moss will. It's Moss down right along the edge of the green. This is a bit of tactics. He's nearly won it. He's won it with this. This is won it. Does he go out? Got out. Stanway needs these two. Come on, you're jumping over. Stanway down, needs two. Needs two to go in front at 6-5. Two for Stanway. No problems. Nearer than the first. Tremendous ball. He's hit the jerk. That's about it. Man it for Stanway. It's only one on one that one on one situation. Thirteen six Duncan. Five across, Stanway. Now then, can, can the man from South Yorkshire, Derek Poole, upset the, upset the tactics? Can he play in the middle of the green against this man who doesn't like to be tied, Brian Duncan? He likes to be free and out. This is his game. He's got to go in one corner, though, now. He's led out. He's led out in one corner. 26 yards down that corner. Difficult corner. One way you can go underneath and above. He's led it, he's after it, he's looking at it. What's he think? Good pace, good pace. Played one, played one, good ball. Two foot past the jack. He's too far, Duncan's too far. He's played too far. Now then, there's a chance. There's a chance to get it two here, the man from South Yorkshire pool. What about this? Better than the first, he's taking it out. Better than the first, he's hit Jack. Great ball, great ball. He needs these two. Duncan played up, doesn't worry about being short. Duncan, hey, oh, what about this? Tight, waved him tight, but he saved one. Excellent ball, saved one. One away is better than two. So it's Duncan, 13-5 against Poole, and it's Stanway. Bernard Stanway, the pot is open. Bernard Stanway, 7-5 in front against Teddy Moss from Warwick and Worcester. Tension now building. Tremendous atmosphere here. to see Roy Price in one quarter-final and Bernard Stanway in another quarter-final result winning. We've seen Stanway in one semi-final and Price in another. It's not to be, that's how balls go. It's Stanway in the low and hope. It's enough to be two down here. Two to tell Looking at Duncan's in, playing him close now. Duncan in, what about that for a ball? Duncan's in. Duncan's in, 14-9 line. Who beats Duncan? He's giving him five now. He'll get two, this fellow. He'll get two. No, he's just overplayed. Two to Duncan. 
He's having a look. He's having a look. Bull's having a look. Who's in? Duncan's weighing up the situation. He's weighing one. One, he says. One to Duncan. Another one to Duncan. Gradually edging his way, way through now, Duncan. 15-9. Now we're back along the edge of the green. Stanway against Moss. This must be Moss, Moss's, Moss's tactic. Play Stanway along the edge of the green. Now then, Stanway trying. Just played to four. Just played to four. Just gone out. Just gone out. <laughs> Just gone out. Short. Now is a chance for Stanway. Chance for Stanway to play the jack or his ball to get in there. He can't be short. No way he can be short. Stanway up. Oh, he's played at it. Played at the end. What's he think? Is he over the top? He's hit that other one for two. It's two. Two to Moss. That's a bad ball for Bernard. Oh, disappointment for Bernard. 9 6 now. He's wiping his brow. He's thinking about it, but that's he you know, for the look and he didn't get the look. Never mind, there's a long way to go yet. Come on, Bernard, let's get going. That's what everybody's saying, Duncan again. Look at Duncan. He's the man, he's not very happy with that end. He's pulled one up the green. He looks to be have one on the jack. Not there with his second. Bill, Bill, as he reached, this is a, this is one in a this is a no ball. This is a ball that you need. You wonder whether they can play some time. That's a terrible ball. Duncan 15-9. Racing away. Racing away, Duncan. We've got one or two poppies people looking at us now. Kevin Robinson down there, all on the line. All the poppies people are watching us. We've got him. We've got people. This is a. This is not a good ball. Has he found Stanway's weakness out? I wonder whether he's found his weakness out. That's a bad ball. Still people coming in. We're talking about 3,000 people. Here. Quarter past five at night. And they're still coming in. As they're watching Stanway struggling a little bit. Nine six down and two down at the moment. Bill Stanway under immense pressure when you think about it. Everybody's on for him. Can he win this? He's a chance. This is one. This is one. Don't worry about it. Looking round now, the number one green, packed to capacity. The, the stand full, 600 people in the stand. Probably 700, 800 people. Everybody in favour of Bernard Stanway. Bernard Stanway, the Bertie's Head Hotel man. Playing against Terry Moss, yes. Bertie the Berman, as one man said down there. It's quite right, everybody makes a mistake. It's Stanway, number 64 on his back. He's going, he's weighing it up. Look at him now, here he up. Has he a chance? Has he hit his own? Has he hit his own? Stanway, look at the crowd! Oh, the crowd are dancing. The crowd are dancing. Where will he be tonight if Stanway wins it? What's he done? He's turned over. He's turned over. Finger peg, he's near. He's won it. He's won it with the land. Too far. Run out, run out, Stanway one. Stanway one down. One down, Stanway now losing 10 7. The ball that he played, he thought he'd hit his own, but he hit Terry Moss's wood. The Warwick and Worcester man was in front of the 
in front of the jack, about two foot away, and he's running his wood. Back to Brian Duncan now, Duncan sailing away, 18-9. Who beats this fella, Duncan? <coughs> Who beats him? Look at him. The man, educated ball, the number one player, played another good ball. Tremendous ball, Duncan. Two foot off, he's playing the corners. I bet the lad Poole wonders what's happened to him. He wonders what he's done here, what he's done to deserve this. Great ball, though, he's played a good ball. Played a good ball. Duncan down, he'll not be sure. He'll not be sure. He'll not be sure, Duncan, hey up. What about this? What about this? Hey up, hey up. Underneath. Now then, a chance. A chance for him to get back in the game. 18 going down. One off. Derek Field, South York. He's let it go. He's not short. Why? Oh, he's not short. Wonder who's on. Does he think Duncan's on? Does he think Duncan's on? Hey, up. Who's on now? Now then, hey, up. Duncan. He wonders who's on. Field play through. Duncan's in. This is a terrible ball. This is an awful ball, really. If Duncan's in. This is an awful ball. Phil weighing it up, wondering what's happening. He's wondering what's happening. He's played the ball through and he's shouting for a measure. I think Duncan's in. In the meantime, we're going back with Bernard Stanway. Stanway, 10-7 under pressure. One down, a good ball to beat. Stanway played through, never on the land. Aroma, aroma there. You've got to get him on the land when you're playing through. Stanway down, one down, 11-7. This fella, Teddy Moss, done well in the last few weeks in Warwick and Worcester and Birmingham area. Would be upsetting the odds. When you look at his crowd, over there, they're all with Teddy Moss, all on that side. We talk about the Potsdam people having good support, but I tell you, the Warwick and Worcester lads. Now then, he's going up the side of the green again. I think he's weighed Stanway's weakness up. Ah. He's got him weighed up. Wonder whether he's lost a jack. Has he lost a jack? No, right on the edge of the green. A good jack, that. Nice to have a good jack. He's played one. He's played one. He's played one. A good ball. Oh, he knows where to put the jack. Now Stanway under pressure. The brother of Joe. Joe Stanway, the man who's won a few big tournaments. What about Doug? What about this? He's played up. He's on the road. Chance. Wide. Wide. Boss is in. Hey up. Duncan's under pressure now. Line two down. Duncan, two down. Duncan under pressure. Two good balls. Duncan asking the situation. He's asking that one down. One down. He's played at it. Duncan. Never short. Never short. Off he goes, up the mat. What's he say about this? Hit Jack. Hey, up. Who's in now? Who's in now? What's the dunk? Come on. He's got the shot. It's excitement now here at the Florence Green. Now then, who's in? Terry Moss. Stanway's laughing. He can't wait up. He do not laugh much, but who's in? Who's in here? Who's in? 39, Terry Moss, weighing the situation up. Well, who's in? Moss, he fancies two. Duncan, though, he played the, he played the ball there. Uh, through, hit the jack. 19-11, two points away from the place in the final, Duncan. And he's led one. He's led one. They're frightening him. These players, they're frightened of him. I think they're getting a bit frightened of this Brian Duncan now. Hey, up. He's beat him. Just won it. I don't think he'll be short of this ball, though. I don't think he'll be short now. Hey, up. He's off. He's off. Soon as let it go. What about this? He's played a bit outside land. You know, they don't peg much here. Who's in? Not Goodens. Who's in? Who's in? He's not asked yet. Bill's not asked. He's weighing the situation up. He's not asked still, man. Now, the does he turn over? No, he's played up. He's played up the heavy corner. Now then, 
If he plays outside, land his no chance. This one, that's one. That's nearest. That's nearest. That's nearest. Two. Can't get back from this fella. They can't beat Duncan at this lead in front. He gives him seven stars and he's got seven in front of him now. 19 Duncan, 12 Poole. The other game, 12 for Moss, seven for Stanway. Everybody rooting for Stanway. They need him in. They want him in. He's lost a bit of concentration at the moment. Now he's a chance. He's a chance now. He's led a bad in here, Moss. Down way down, 40, 35 to 40 yards. He's won it with this. He's won it with this. He's won it. Not a good one. Not a good one. Not a good one. No, not a good one. Terry Moss, hoping to improve. He's after it. He's excited. He's here. He's here. This is won it. This is won it. This won it last week. This is won it last week. Don't worry about that. He won it last week. Stanway now, tinted glasses, everything he's got. He needs everything, he's pulling out on everything now. Stanway, he's not short. He's not short. Chance, is he? Chance, he's a little bit outside, he needs to peg. Chance, if he can pull it, what a great ball. He's looking for a good lead, he's got the jack. Duncan, 13-19, pool leading out on the other game. Semi-final, the British Crown Green, All-England Championship here at the Prime. Everybody congregated The spectators are sitting everywhere, sighted everywhere, on top of the stands, on top of the marquee. They are enjoying it, they are enjoying the day. Tremendous crowd, everybody wants Stanway against Duncan, I think. They need Stanway against Duncan. Duncan again, straight in, two foot behind his ball, but he's in. Is he short? He's not there. He's not there. This is two for Duncan, this is the final. Is he there? Has he reached? He's not there, he's wasting the chance. Oh, and Brian Duncan looks to the crowd, he's wasting the chance. 21 means everything in this game, and he's only so far got 20. Bad ball from Duncan. Anyway, Stanway, one down, Moss going for two. Two four missing the jack, it's one to Moss. 13 8, Stanway. He needs to build up some sort of consistency, Stanway does. <laughs> It could be a Moss against Duncan final. Duncan going for the vital point, right in the corner. Played the corner, finger peg on the running part of the green. Played a good ball, played a good ball, Duncan. He's not far away. That'll do for me, that'll do for me. Now then, he's under press, cool. finger peg. He needs to save the centre. The young lad from South, has he reached? Has he reached? <laughs> Has he reached? That's the question. He's not reached. If it reached, he's not reached. Duncan leads it. He's got game on. Game, game on for Duncan. The Lancashire champion. The man who everybody has to beat in Crown Green. He's off. Flicks his ball up to his chest. He's here. Red shirt. shirt. He's here. The man. The man. He's not played up. He's not played it close. That'll do him. On the road, Duncan lies up for the final in the All England Championship. First time in the final. What can this man do, Pool? He's down. He shouldn't be short. Is he underneath? Who's in? Is he underneath? Duncan. Duncan lies up. Can he peg? He can't peg here. Doesn't peg. Duncan finally to the All England Championship. Stanway under pressure. 
pressure. He's got the pressure on. He's 13 8 now. Stanley is one off. 13 9. Now, then, what can he do? What can he do, Stanley? What's he going to do? He's led out a different ball for Bernard this. Finger peg. Round peg to the centre of the green. He needs a good lead. He looks to be outside a little bit and not there as well. 13-9. Stanway now. It's Duncan in the final against Stanway almost. Has he reached? No, he's not reached. Stanway. Just more Stanway. Stanway goes for two. Played a better ball, he's played a better ball. Stanway, line two, he needs him to get back to an hand of 13. Moss, not short. What about this? Is he there? The crowd are going now, the crowd is two to Stanway. Two to Stanway. 13-11, Stanway. Now then, they're all going round. We're nearing the climax of the British Crown Green All England. Brian Duncan, everybody's favourites, race there to the final. But who's going to meet him in the final? Is it going to be Stanway? from the Potteries and District Counties, or is it going to be Terry Moss from the Warwick and Worcester County? They're halfway up. Stanway 11, Moss 13. It's time to break now, and everybody is talking about the Stanway Dunkley. The part of the green that matters. This is the part where they can catch him out. Stanway. 30 yards, thumb peg in the drain. Thumb peg is down. It looks to be good pace. They're shouting short, but he's not short. He's not that much. He's a good ball. Played a yard away. Terry Moss down. The Warwick and Worcester is playing behind the Warwick and Worcester crowd. It's Moss. Has he reached? Has he passed him? Only oh, just passed him. He's just passed him. It's a good ball. It's really it's a good ball. Come on, Bernard. Players one. He's reached. He's not short. Not short. Can he hit the jack? He's won it. This is won it. Won it. He's hit the jack. He's run out. Stanway looking to the crowd and unlucky there. He's run out after hitting the jack. Stanway disappointed. Chance for Moss to make 15 11, but I think he's not here. He's giving it up. He's giving it up. Now then, Bernard. It's 14 11. Duncan's in the final. It's Duncan against the winner of these. What a day it's been. What could be better for the Florence Private Bowling Club to have one man from local in the semi final? And the British Crown Green and all England and everything you want to talk about. Bowler, the man in the Crown Green bowling in the final, that's Brian Duncan. Oh, Changing the mark, he can't be there. He's about to short as a carrot. Short as a carrot. You've got as much room now as you've ever had. Finger peg. He's not much further. Oh, he's not much further. The shouting run away. They know the crowd now. That's not a good ball. It's Moss. Has he reached? Has he reached again? I don't know whether he's any further. He's tight. That way's a chance for two now. Come on, Bernard, now. Put the fingers about this. It's all tension and all this about the game. It means nothing. That's what